today I'm looking at five things I currently hate about running. Hey cats, Ed, downbeat bud here. I'm oh, not really all that downbeat, it's just a bit horrible outside and grey. And it got me thinking about some things that are getting me down about running right now. So I'm going to turn it into a positive by venting and then I'll feel a lot better afterwards. Some things have been winding me up and lingering around like a bad smell. And those things can seriously jog on and be gone. Number one, people who anonymously troll other runners online. I have to say I have been a victim of that over the course of the last couple of years. Some people feel the need to do it and it's not on. There's all sorts of ways that people do that. I know it's happened to other people out there as well. Pace shaming, for example. Oh, that's not running, that's walking. Whatever. Deliberately disrespecting or finding fault with other people's running. You gotta remember, a lot of runners just run to enjoy themselves. They just like it. They might do it for exercise or whatever, and that's absolutely fine. Some runners aren't interested in times or PRs, breakneck speed, that's just not a thing. They just like getting out there. It could be for social reasons, for example. They just like running and running with others. I think if somebody out there feels the need to have this massive opinion about Ted Smith, who's done 150 part runs in a row or something, and suggests that that's not as important as your race to get under 240 and anything aside of that's just irrelevant i think you've got to seriously consider what life is about at the end of the day life is about enjoyment isn't it it's about actually doing some stuff that we actively enjoy we're interested in if you've got to put other people down to make yourself feel better then there's something wrong there you know enjoy your targets but don't put others down it's just unnecessary i've been trolled by people in the past but they miss one important fact that ed bud has a brass neck I've been performing on stage for like 23 years. It uh, doesn't affect me in the slightest. In fact, I turn it round and I feel a little bit sad for those people. Two, overpriced and overhyped shoes. I keep hearing the word product banded around with shoes. And yeah, they're more important to me than a product, not just a thing. I really like understanding them, what they do, like a tool, you know? More like a screwdriver. You know I have a very dry sense of humor, guys. Many of my videos, I have tongue planted firmly in cheek. But I've got to say, there are some shoes promoted to the public that are gratuitously overpriced. Think back to 2017 when Nike launched the Vaporfly 4%. You know, £180. That was a huge price back then. That was insane. No one would even consider it unless they were really, really serious about cutting a few seconds off their time. Now that barely gets you an invincible run, does it? You're a few quid short of an A6 Meta Speed Sky. 80 pounds short for an Alpha Fly. The majority of daily training, I just don't really think you need it. These shoes are promoted and they're hyped and you're made to want them or need them. And most of the time, I just don't need them. I've been having fun in all of my cheaper shoes recently. I don't know if you've noticed it. The majority of the time I'm heading out in stuff that's a little bit more affordable, just daily options. I'm having a great time. My performance and training and stuff's just going like this. It's just going up. It's only going one way. Hard, dedicated and structured training. It's just going to do you more than a pair of shoes. But I mainly want to focus here on price because it's only going one way as well, isn't it? Sadly, those exploits of Nike have only pushed the other manufacturers to increase their prices as well. The crazy gang are all getting on board. Brooks, Asics, Hoka seem to keep things a little bit more reasonable. I think it's setting up a very damaging future for the whole of the running shoe game, really. I mean, is this £135 running shoe really worth half the price of this running shoe? Is there that much more foam and technology? I would suggest no. Probably it's more about the fact that they've spent a hell of a lot more money advertising this shoe. This one barely even comes under the radar. Well, as everybody knows what this thing is. That's only gonna become a bigger issue as 2021 draws to a close. Number three, people that show bias to a specific running shoe brand. So over the time of running the channel, I've been called a Nike fanboy, a Nike hater, an Adidas lover, and someone that never reviews three-stripe shoes. Biased against Hoka, not trying enough A6 shoes out. Too few brands, too many brands. It just starts to get a bit boring replying to some of that stuff. I've got to be honest. I think it's pretty clear I tried to be as honest and down the line as I can possibly be. If there's a shoe that particularly interests me, I might try and get hold of it and test it out. Or if there's something that lots and lots of viewers want to see reviewed, I'll grab it and see what it's all about. I've got no leanings towards any of them. I just 
like trying stuff out. I've liked some models from some brands and others not so much. It's not chained to a specific brand or logo. For example, I really love the Adios 6, one of the best shoes that I've tried out for years and years. But the Boston 10 just left me scratching my head. I just don't get it. Some models make perfect sense, great designs and implementation as well. Others should work, but when you get them in hand or more importantly on foot, it's just a big nay. I think it's important to look past the brands and actually realize that it's the runner's need that's the most important. What do you need out of a shoe? Does it fulfill that need? Great. Does it matter what's on the side of it? Absolutely not. Sometimes I see comments where people are just absolutely dead set that a certain brand's trash or another brand's brilliant and all the others are just useless. I think it's down to you and you've got to understand and show some empathy that other people aren't you. That can be very hard for some people. We're not the same. Everybody has different shaped feet. Some of us have feet that are quite drastically different in size. I know my good buddy Andy, the FOD runner, he really struggles with sizing sometimes because one of his feet is quite a bit bigger than the other. People give him a lot of stick for that. It's ridiculous. I mean, the guy just tells it like it is. He's one of my go-to reviewers if I want to see about a shoe perhaps I haven't tried out. I know I'm going to get it down the line from Andy. Acceptance, understanding and empathy. Four, confusion over the World Athletics running shoe regulations. I see conversations about these midsole stack measurements all the time. Instagram's a really big bicycle pump of a device when it comes to those World Athletics midsole stack rules. But for the general public that you have to be honest, make up the majority of people that probably buy running shoes, it doesn't make any difference. For the bulk of all runners, those rules just aren't really applicable in any way. Wear what you want, enjoy the shoes that you've got. If you wanna buy a super shoe and wear it to run two, three miles around the block every day and save your legs, great, that's fine. If you wanna buy a big shoe like the Prime X or something and wear it in a race, well, I can't see anybody wearing that to try and win a race. I just don't think it's that type of shoe, but it's cool, it's your money. Do what you want. And the constant talk about this illegal and legal shoes, and oh, it's just so tiresome. It's a real drag. And the constant question of validity, it just begins to grind a little bit on me. Oh, you know, that guy wore the tempo next percent in a race. Find someone that cares. The rules are very clear as to how they apply to specific instances, situations. Most folks that turn up for local races, they're not aware of them. It's not a thing to them, it does not matter. It's just a non-issue as far as the general public are concerned. I don't see local races in the future or near future having lasers set up ready to measure everybody's shoes. You know, Mrs Muggins is beaten up old Asics that she's been wearing for 20 years. That's probably not a thing. I would imagine Mrs Muggins would upgrade her shoes every few months. But do remember, in the UK, we still vote using a piece of card and a pencil. So yeah, I don't think it's gonna change anytime soon. Five, and the last thing today that really gets my goat about running right now. It's gotta be the four foot prancing, specially set up, ego massaging product reviews. I say product reviews there because a lot of people treat a lot of running gear as this product designed to take away all your worries and troubles. And when it comes to it, most of the time it doesn't do that. I noticed a shoe ad recently on Facebook that was receiving a lot of heat from runners. You had these slow motion shots of these very elite looking athletes running right up on their forefoot with the heel actually not touching the ground at any point. And this wasn't like a high-end race shoe either, it was just a daily running shoe. It made me think about the thousands of people that I've seen sort of running past me or with me and how none of them run like that at all. In the past, people used to bemoan my running form and say, oh, you know, he's a heel striker. And that just made me a bad person, apparently, because I was a heel striker. I'm not a bad person. I run and I don't get injured. It's cool. You see these elite people running around this urban environment. It just smacks to me of product, like a pack of biscuits or washing up liquid. And I think to a lot of runners, it's just a massive turn off. And it's almost comical in nature as well. It's like watching a load of deer run around with these shoes on their feet or hooves. You know, are people gonna run like that for 26.2 miles? Of course they're not. I mean, if you look at the master man Kipchoge, He's running 26.2 miles, one of the fastest marathon runners ever. He's a midfoot striker. He's got efficiency in mind. He knows that he can't do that for that length of time. Ain't gonna happen. Please run shoe brands, give us some truth about that stuff. That's all we want. People get out there and do some daily miles. 
They just want to see stuff that is relevant to them. <sighs> I feel much better now. A quick musical interlude for you. Can't believe this was released 10 years ago. The vaccines. What do you expect from the vaccines? Loads of great tracks on this one and still for me is their best album. Or oh, the debut is always hard to follow up, isn't it? They got something new coming out soon, so I have to check that out and see if there's a few winners on there. But Wrecking Bar and If You Wanna, those just sum up what was so great about the vaccines when they first appeared on the scene. Blow It Up, that was a good track as well. I really love the reverby guitars and driving drum and bass sound. Interesting lyrics as well. Everything about the band was great then, but I just feel they've lost their way a little bit after that. Go and check it out. The vaccines. What do you expect from the vaccines? Thanks for listening to my murmurings once again. It's very much appreciated, guys. Do let me know what you think about all those different topics that I covered in today's video down in the comments. If you haven't done so already, guys, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications so you're notified. Helps the channel out a huge amount as well if you give this video a thumbs up, like, and also share this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.